You're about to see raw, jaw-dropping images of Mars captured directly by the Perseverance rover. You'll be looking at real records sent by a nearly one-ton mechanical traveler that crossed space for seven months, braved the emptiness between worlds, and touched down on our neighboring planet in February 2021 with a bold mission. Search for signs of life. Sounds like fiction? It isn't. Every photo you're about to see opens a crack between two worlds and invites us to piece together a puzzle that could answer the question that's haunted us for centuries. Are we really alone? Before diving into the images, it's worth remembering the size of the challenge. Mars doesn't welcome visitors. Since the 1960s, more than half of all landing attempts have failed. Thin atmosphere, treacherous gusts, rocky ground. It's like trying to park a plane in a gravel lot, in fog, with barely any brakes. Even so, in 2021, NASA took the risk again and won. After traveling millions of kilometers, the Perseverance rover braced for the famous seven minutes of terror, the stretch between hitting the top of the atmosphere and touching the ground. It's a brutal window. Signals don't reach Earth in real time, and any problem has to be solved on its own, with no human hands to correct the course. The survival ballet starts with a heat shield facing absurd temperatures as the spacecraft tears through Martian air at nearly 20,000 kilometers per hour. Next, a supersonic parachute, the largest ever used on that planet, deploys to slam the speed down. When fabric isn't enough, the retro rockets take over, and finally, the sky crane handles the last step. Cables lower the rover with surgical care onto the floor of Jezero Crater. In mission control, silence. Then, a tiny square of an image appears. The explorer is standing. Mars officially had a new resident. Why choose Jezero Crater? The answer is written in the rocks. In the distant past, this crater was a lake fed by rivers, forming a monumental delta. The geology there is like an open book, layers upon layers of sediments arranged by flowing water, now preserved like a giant fossil. If microorganisms ever lived on Mars, the odds of finding their traces go up in an environment like this, where minerals, ancient mud, and salts can lock in chemical signatures over billions of years. The first raw photos sent by Perseverance revealed this delta frozen in time with hypnotic clarity. Miniature slopes, carved erosion patterns, stratified slabs. On Earth, similar deposits hold entire pages of life's history. In Jezero, every stone can act like a time capsule, and that's what drives us to examine every grain of dust. The secret behind this avalanche of data is the roaming laboratory the rover carries. It's not a little cart with a camera. It's a full scientific platform on wheels, equipped with 23 cameras and an arsenal of instruments. There are eyes that guide the route and avoid traps in the terrain, systems that sweep the panorama and build ultra-high-resolution mosaics, and sensors dedicated to dissecting minerals and textures in search of anything that reveals water in the past. The rover's head houses the main set, like Mascam Z, which produces 3D images and 360-degree panoramas, letting scientists scan the environment as if they were there with binoculars in hand. Lower down, the Hascams watch the path, calculating risks so the wheels don't get stuck in tricky dunes or sharp rocks. And Supercam? That one goes further. It uses a laser to vaporize tiny points on rocks and, from a distance, decode their chemical makeup. The landing itself got a dedicated documentarian. The entry, descent, and landing cameras recorded the parachute opening, the rocket maneuver, and the exact instant the wheels kissed the ground. Here, science isn't just tables. It has image, texture, and context. Minutes after touchdown, the story had already changed. The first black and white images, sent by the Hascams, showed a harsh scene. Boulders, dust, a distant horizon, no colorful spectacle, and that was exactly the point. It was the hello from a new explorer. In the days that followed, the colors arrived, orange tones on the rocks, reddish hues on the dunes, and that Martian sky with a signature all its own, unlike anywhere else we know. In some frames, the rover's own shadow stretches across the ground, a reminder that on the other side of the lens is a lonely machine working for all of us. The coldness of numbers gave way to a sense of presence. We weren't looking at charts, we were peeking at a world. But Perseverance didn't arrive alone. Tucked in its belly traveled a curious passenger, the Ingenuity helicopter. Weighing just 1.8 kilograms, 
it seemed far too fragile to fly in an atmosphere with about 1% of Earth's density. Even so, in April 2021, it completed the first controlled flight in history on another planet, human-made rotors slicing through Mars's thin air, a sentence that didn't exist until then. The raw images from that day showed a small oval shadow on the ground, simple, yet historic. Planned for five test flights, the drone shattered expectations and surpassed 70 takeoffs, scouting areas the rover couldn't reach, checking routes, helping map hazards, and pointing to safer paths. It was, in practice, Perseverance's eye in the sky. Those short hops, sometimes just a few meters, opened a new chapter in planetary exploration. If a tiny helicopter can fly on Mars, what else might we pilot there in the coming decades? Seeing and flying, however, were only part of the plan. Perseverance's most ambitious goal is to collect rock and soil samples, seal them in metal tubes, and store them for a future pickup. For the first time, humanity prepared to bring pieces of Mars back to Earth's labs. The process, recorded in detail by the cameras, is oddly hypnotic. The robotic arm reaches out, the drill bites into the rock, the cylinder receives and seals the sample. Each tube becomes a tiny vault, storing sediments, minerals, and, who knows, microscopic traces of biological chemistry formed when Mars had liquid water at the surface. These vaults will wait for a joint NASA-ESA mission, the sample return program planned for the next decade. Here on Earth, with equipment far more powerful than anything that can fit on a rover, we'll be able to study these rocks with precision that's impossible millions of kilometers away. It's like mailing a question to Mars's past and, years later, getting the answer in our hands. There's also a detail that changes our relationship with that world. For the first time, we took microphones. Yes we listened to Mars. The first recording captured a timid puff, almost a distant whistle, the wind sweeping the plane under a pale sky. Then came other sounds, the creak of wheels chewing on pebbles, the metallic clicks of the arm's joints, even the crack of Supercam's laser striking rocks. Close your eyes and imagine hearing that from more than 200 million kilometers away. For a moment, the distance seems to shrink. The audio isn't just a technical data point, it's a reminder that there's dynamics, movement, weather on a planet we often imagine as silent and static. If life ever existed there, even microscopic life, Mars's soundtrack helped set the stage where it could have flourished. So what have analyses revealed since 2021? The minerals identified in Jezero's rocks leave no doubt. They formed in the presence of liquid water. That strengthens the idea that long ago, Mars was a world of rivers, lakes, and perhaps shallow seas connecting entire basins. In many images, the layered rocks look like the pages of a geologic diary, each line recording a different cycle of sediments pouring through the delta. On top of that, the rover detected organic molecules, not definitive proof of life, but basic ingredients that are part of biology's recipe. Add to that the terrain patterns that resemble dry riverbeds, and you get a consistent picture. Mars was wetter, more active, and possibly habitable in its youth. The final answer isn't here yet, but the clues keep piling up and pulling us toward a bold conclusion. When you think about it, the journey of each photo is as fascinating as what it shows. A click on Mars turns into a stream of bits, crosses deep space, bounces off giant antennas on different continents, and ends up on your phone or TV. It's the planet's silence broken by a thread of data. When Perseverance casts its shadow on the dust and captures its own outline, we're not just seeing a robot. We're seeing the reach of our curiosity. When ingenuity hovers for a few seconds and lands again, we realize that what seemed impossible, flying where there's barely any air, has become routine. And when the rover's arm seals a tube, we're effectively commissioning an investigation that could redefine how we understand our place in the cosmos. Maybe the most powerful thing about this mission is the blend of scales. On one side, there are superlative numbers, 480 million kilometers traveled, supersonic speeds, brutal temperatures, a gigantic parachute opening on another world. On the other, delicate details, the texture of a layered rock, the diffuse glow of the sky, a track in the sand left by a wheel, 
the whisper of the wind captured by a microphone, big milestones and small signals working together to tell the same story. And that story says Mars isn't just a red dot on the astronomical map. It's an open geological archive containing chapters of its watery past and chemical clues we can read line by line. Sample collection fits this plot like a planned climax. Picture it. In the next decade, capsule-sized packages return to Earth carrying fragments of Mars inside, collected and sealed by perseverance. In laboratories, scientists will slice, heat, illuminate, crush, and analyze these grains with techniques that take a whole building, not a robot. If there are structures, isotopic patterns, or molecules that point to ancient biological processes, we won't just be checking off a scientific to-do. We'll be turning the page on our own story. If we find yesterday's life, microscopic and extinct, the next question comes immediately. How common is life in the universe? And if it's common, why haven't we seen it elsewhere yet? The return of these samples doesn't close the book. It opens an entire library of new questions. While that future doesn't arrive, the present doesn't stop. Day after day, Perseverance sends new images, measures new spots, tests new routes, and feeds databases anyone can explore. There's something democratic about all this. The images are public, the sounds are public, the achievements belong to humanity. NASA and JPL Caltech release these records as a shared asset, a reminder that space exploration is a collective project, funded by generations who chose to invest in knowledge. When you look at a raw photo of Mars, you're holding a slice of human effort that took decades of technological refinement to make possible. It's striking how the mission blends boldness with caution. The record-setting helicopter started as a modest experiment. The cameras that give us grand panoramas also handle down-to-earth tasks, like measuring slopes and avoiding traps. The laser that shoots rocks does so to help us calmly build a timeline of the environment. And the colossal parachute, a symbol of technical power, carries a hidden graphic message in its pattern, a touch of ingenuity that sums up the culture of people who design machines to solve nearly impossible problems. Nothing there is gratuitous. Everything has a purpose. Everything connects. In the end, what do these images add to our lives here? They remind us that we're explorers by nature. They remind us that a seemingly dead world may once have been animated by water cycles, active chemistry, and perhaps biology. They remind us that big questions demand patience, rigor, and a dose of courage. And above all, they remind us that the answer to Are We Alone won't come from a single spectacular frame, but from a stack of evidence. Minerals formed in water, preserved organic molecules, coherent sedimentary textures, samples stored methodically. That's how science advances, by adding clues until the conclusion becomes inescapable. Think about the timeline, the landing in February 2021, the first black and white clicks, the move to colorful panoramas, Ingenuity's boundary-breaking flights, the first drillings kicking off a sample bank, the audio carrying Martian wind to our ears, the analyses revealing past water and organics in the rocks. Each step reinforces the previous one and opens room for the next. Everything points to sample return as the next big leap, the moment when, for the first time, we'll hold authentic fragments of another planet in our hands and ask, straight up, whether life ever blossomed there. Until then, this rover keeps rolling, photographing, checking, listening, and transmitting. It's the outstretched arm of our curiosity, proof that dreaming big only makes sense when we put wheels under the dream. When you see a new raw image, remember, it's not just a Martian landscape, it's a reflection of who we are. A restless species obsessed with understanding where we came from and where we might go. If the answer to our oldest question is sleeping in some rock in Jezero, we've already taken the first step to wake it. If these windows into Mars stirred your imagination, be part of this journey with us. Like the video, tell us in the comments what stood out most to you, and subscribe to the channel. That way you won't miss the next discoveries and you'll help carry further the question that guides everything we do. In the end, are we alone? Maybe very soon we'll have a way to answer. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.